Did the Pine phone sprint ahead of the Librem 5? We're now less than a week away from 2020 and I've gotten new information about the two Linux phones that are not generally available yet except to a few. I've talked to the people at Pine64, the makers of the Pine phone. I have not talked to anyone at Purism, but we'll be happy to hear from them if they want to add more information. But based on the information we have from the early reviewers of the Librem 5 and what I know about the Pine phone, we can make some early comparisons. Let's get to it. Next. Welcome back from the holidays, people. Other YouTubers like Hackers Game and TLG have gotten a hold of a Librem 5. I don't know anyone at Purism, and I'm not a fanboy of any device, so I will just tell you how it is. And I'm thankful to both Hackers Game and TLG for showing us what they know right now. To be clear, I've ordered both a Pine phone and a Librem 5. I'm on the evergreen batch of the Librem 5, just like the majority. So that's not going to be available till April at the earliest. But I expect to receive a Pine phone soon, hopefully by mid-January. Anyway, I've managed to do more extensive research on the Pine phone and I was able to verify what I've learned from Pine64 itself. And they were very upfront and detailed in their response and I really appreciate it. And I hope to hear from Purism too so I have a balanced view. Now before I can get into the specifics of how I predict each device would work, let's just do a quick historical comparison. The Librem 5 was developed from scratch. It's a new chip for a phone and they had to customize a new motherboard. There was no existing phone that supported a separate cell baseband and Wi-Fi that can be switched off. Purism used new devices that don't necessarily have drivers in mainline Linux, so they have to get those moved to mainline Linux themselves. So it's a terribly difficult task because they're doing it first. So some of the tech here is untested. Is the motherboard perfect? Could there have been mistakes in the engineering? These are things that none of us know about and it could mean that there are actual flaws down at the hardware level itself. That has shown itself now in the few shipped units of the Librem 5 Birch Batch or Batch 2. This is the first batch that has been delivered to end users and mostly to reviewers. Just an example of the main issues. Overheating, battery life extremely short, the CPU running at full speed all the time, USB-C charging issues, charger shorts. Now I will tell you that the Pine phone will not experience these same issues. Not because I'm a supporter of one device versus the other, but because of the history of the Pine phone is completely different. You see, the Pine phone is not actually a new device. It's basically based on the existing product called Pine A64 LTS. This is a single board computer or SBC that has been made in 2015. If you look at the specs of the Pine phone and the Pine A64 LTS, you will see that they are practically identical. The motherboard of the Pine phone is completely reworked. It's not just a copy of the Pine A64 LTS with large connectors removed, but from a software point of view, they are identical. So mainline Linux sees the two devices as being the same. The only real difference is that the Pine phone has phone sensors, GPS, and of course the cell baseband modem. So it's quite a different development path versus the Librem 5. From a software point of view, the Pine A64 LTS has gone through four years of painstaking software work to make it functional. And most of the heavy lifting took at least three years, three years before it settled down. And Pine64 has no software developer, so all the work was done by the Linux community. You should all understand this so we have a proper expectation about a new device. I expect, by the way, that if Pine64 created a new phone using a completely brand new system on a chip, SOC, like the i.mx8m used by Purism, that it would take years for it to sell down as well. Fortunately, Pine64 already has experience with the Rock 64 Pro 
chip that is 10 times faster than the all-winner chip in the Pine phone. And that already has mainline Linux support, so that's getting there. You can see the different approaches here. Pine 64's moves have been more gradual. And though we didn't recognize them early on as a phone player, it seems to me that they have a clear path. If the current Pine phone succeeds, it would seem possible to integrate a newer SoC like the Rock chips used on the Rock 64 Pro into it. Again, that is 10 times faster. That would be closer to the current crop of mobile phones. Now, I have no idea how hard it would be to remake the motherboard, but if Purism changed to a newer chip, it would be a new struggle for sure. Just to give you an idea of the limitations of these two devices, the Pine phone has the CPU speed of a Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, which is not exactly blazingly fast. It's shocking to find out that the Librem 5 may not be much faster. Based on specs alone, the Librem 5 could be 20 to 30% faster. This could depend on how the software is optimized. Both are actually based on the same quad-core A53 Cortex ARM architecture. Except that the Librem 5 is running at a slightly higher clock speed of 1.5 GHz instead of 1.2 GHz and has an additional core. I can't find specs of what memory is used on the Librem 5, but the Librem 5 supports DDR4. The Pine phone is using the older LPDDR3. That could make a difference if they use faster memory on the Librem 5. But then make sure you understand the difference in price. A Librem 5 is $700 versus $150 for the Pine phone. So it's not like 30% more. The GPU acceleration is now working with the new open source drivers on the Pine A64 LTS. So I expect that will work on the Pine phone as well. The driver is called Lima. The Librem 5 uses an open source driver called Etnaviv or Vivante in reverse. It does look from the videos that at least the GPU side is working fine on the Librem 5. This could have been an issue for the Pine phone, but it looks to be solved. Both devices seem to have no issue with the Wi-Fi. The Pine phone used a very common Wi-Fi chip that has had historical Linux support, so it was expected to work. But both devices need to upgrade to a newer chip that uses 802.11 AC. All current phones support AC mode, which allow for 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz to be used simultaneously, and that allows for a faster Wi-Fi connection. Unfortunately, it's not available for either device for a while. On the battery and power side, there are already PinePhone dev kits released, and since it's based on the existing A64 LTS, then it was not expected to have any problems. The battery life is expected to last much longer, easily 8 hours on the Pine phone and 26 hours of standby time. I don't think currently that the Librem 5 would last anywhere near that if unplugged. Now, this battery issue is serious because it means you can't really use the Librem 5 as a portable phone at all yet, which kind of defeats the purpose. The Pine phone doesn't have that problem to overcome. Also, the Pine phone already make and receive calls. It, it has some issues with using the earpiece at the moment, so some software work is still needed. But it's close to being an operational phone. The Librem 5 cannot make calls yet on top of the power problem. Now, this phone calling support is a big deal for the Pine phone. The reason is because the Pine phone only received the cell baseband as the primary new device. Most of the other parts already existed before on the Pine A64 LTS board. Overcoming this means that most everything is expected to work. By the way, the Pine A64 LTS board works with Ubuntu, Debian, Manjaro, Fedora, and the Pine Phone dev kit has already been used with Ubuntu Touch, Postmark and OS, and there are betas on Loon OS and Sailfish OS. So there could be wide immediate support once the hardware is available. What I'm saying here is that if history is any guide, it took Pine64 years to get this kind of compatibility. So are we really expecting everything to work on the Librem 5 in a short amount of time? Granted, Purism is at least some programmers, maybe a couple. And Pine64 is at the mercy of a community, 
which typically moves at a slower pace. But based on what we know, I can just guess that the Pine phone will be mostly running by the March mass release time frame. Again, simply because there isn't that much work to be done. Hardware is set. The hardware that I will receive on the advanced version will be the same as the one released in the final version. The Librem 5 has a bigger uphill battle. I really wish them both success. It's really important for the rest of us. But we need to set proper expectations here. If the Librem 5 has some hardware issues, like some motherboard kind of flaw, that could result in more delays. The Pine phone is unlikely to develop any hardware type of flaw. Mostly the only issues will be software, which of course means it's solvable. Basically, the main difference between the Pine phone and the Librem 5, to be honest, has to do with the camera. The camera is low grade on the Pine phone, but the camera does not yet work on the Librem 5, so that advantage is not something that can be appreciated yet. I'm a bit shocked to see that the Librem 5 is being introduced with a $2,000 USA model, considering that it's not even clear if there are motherboard issues on the current model. And this also assumes then that the CPU will be locked in for the longer term. So it's a bit of bad PR, to be honest. They should have waited to announce the USA model until we know for sure that the phone will work. They could have begun work on it without the PR. This reminds me a little bit about the Librem 13 laptop, which still uses the seventh generation Intel CPU, and that is way behind the other Linux laptop vendors. Anyway, here's a chart comparing issues with both phones so we can see what the current status is. Some of these issues are tied to Linux drivers, and if the devices are similar, if one of them solves it, then the other company will likely solve it too. But some of these issues could be hardware related, and that could be a massive delay. So, comparing Wi-Fi, both Wi-Fi's on the Librem 5 and the Pine phone are working. Bluetooth has just recently been proved to be working now on the Librem 5. It's only partially working on the Pine phone. The camera is working partially on the Pine phone. They have not gotten the front-facing camera to work, but the camera does not work at all on the Librem 5. Calls do not work on the Librem 5, and yes, they work on the Pine phone. Obviously no sound on the Librem 5, but the sound is only coming from the speaker on the Pine phone at the moment. The earpiece is not yet working. Texting is working on both the Pine phone and the Librem 5. 4G data is not working on the Librem 5, but it is working on the Pine phone. USB-C has a charging problem on the Librem 5. There's no such problem on the Pine phone. The volume controls are not working on the Librem 5. We don't know what that will do on the Pine phone. Likely volume is a software only issue, so I'm sure that will be solved for both. Charging issues, there are charging issues on the Librem 5, but there are none on the Pine phone. The battery is expected to last about one hour on a Librem 5 and up to five hours on a Pine phone of constant use, but that's expected to reach up to three hours on the Librem 5 and up to eight hours on a Pine phone with 26 hours of standby. The sensors are unknown on the Librem 5. The sensors are working on the Pine phone. GPS, we don't know the status of that on the Librem 5. That is working on the Pine phone. The status of the software for both is partial. We don't know. We know that Ubuntu Touch partially works on the Pine phone. At the moment, there are some short-term risks with the Librem 5. It has to do with the possibility of hardware issues, which may not be easily solved. I'm not worried, to be honest, about the software configuration side. I expect the phone side will be eventually fixed. The drivers used for the cell baseband have been around for many years based on the Ophono project, which was by Intel. But the power, charging, and battery issues may be hardware faults. We don't know for sure. I'm sure the purism people are having sleepless nights trying to figure that out. Whatever the issues are, I'm also sure it's solvable. However, there may be further delays, so it could be far out before the phone is fully functional, even if you get one. I don't expect any significant risk in the Pine phone. I expect that it will work and that the issues will be more about software polish than standard functionality. Some things may take a while to work on the Pine phone. For example, the front-facing camera may not work for a while. 
Because there are so many projects involved with the Pine Phone and one already functional, a bunch to touch, then it seems to me that the Pine Phone will be quite usable soon. I know I'm not bearing all good news on the mobile Linux front right now, but if we don't have the right expectations, we will all be disappointed and I don't want these projects to fail. Either of them. To me, these are essential tools for privacy. I hope you enjoyed this video and subscribe so you can see more about privacy and privacy related devices. Leave comments below and you can see that I respond to most comments. I can also be reached on my own platform at Brax.me, which is an open source social media and messaging platform. See you all again soon. Thank you.